In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this interactive dropdown using Figma. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a web design that I'm currently working on. I'm currently working on this retail website design. So at the top, I have a navigation bar, and then beneath that, I have details for a specific item. So this page is for this classic t-shirt where I have a description about it, an area for someone to pick a size, some details, and they can add it to their shopping cart. And then beneath that, I have several reviews. So for this prototype, I want it to feel like a real application. So right now, if I were to go into the prototype of this app, it doesn't feel like a real app because if I click on something like the drop down menu, it doesn't do anything. So I want to add interactivity to this prototype. So going back here, I'm going to zoom into this area. And so I want to add interactivity for this size selector. So that way the user can tap on it and then a drop down menu will appear. On the side, I already designed the drop down menu for this page. So initially I have the state when it's closed and when the user opens it, I want several options to become visible. And when the user is on top of an option, I want it to change color for the hover state. So these are the states for the dropdown menu that I want to add to my prototype. I want to create components out of these elements so that way it's reusable throughout the project. So for this first element, which is when the dropdown is closed, I'm going to go to the top here and click create component. Now, if you're brand new to components, I have an entire tutorial that goes over this specific topic. So I'll link that video in the description below. Now, once I do, we can see that the icon over here has changed. So we know that it is definitely a component. And on the side over here, we have different properties we can add to this component. So a new feature that recently came out is the idea of variance. So I'm going to use this for the project. So I'm going to click over here to add a new variant. And a variant is a new way to group and organize components within your project. So instead of having five different components for this dropdown, I'm going to organize it all together to be under one component with different states. So once I click that I want to add a variant, we can see that these different properties are now added, but you can completely customize this depending on the component and the style attributes that you want to add. So I'm just going to take this and move it up a little bit. So we have this original component up here, and if I double tap into it, I can modify the properties of this. So the initial property for this element, I don't want it to be property one and then property two, because that's not really descriptive as to what is happening for this component. So that first property, I'm going to replace it with the word state because it is going to indicate whether the state is open or closed. And for the second property, I'm going to add the word hover because I'm going to define these elements whether or not they're in the hover state. So now I modified the values for this first element and the second element was added because as soon as you add a variant, it's going to add another element to the page because you can't have one component with a variant. There has to be different components within it, but I don't want to have two duplicates of the same thing. I want to utilize what I already designed over here. And for this element, I'm going to copy and paste all of the elements within this container and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to paste it. So now we have the design up here. And so for this element, I'm going to modify its properties. So here I'm going to write state and I'm going to set it equal to open. Then I'm going to add a comma and then I'm going to add hover and I'm going to set that to none because it is currently not in the hover state. So now we can see that this area over here has changed because I have a state and it's open and the hover is set to none. So now I have this element on the page. Now I'm going to add a few more for the hover states for the small, medium, and large states. So now with these elements added as variants, I'm just going to slightly modify the design of it a little bit 
So I'm going to select that rectangle under small and modify the color of it to match the color of this state. And then I'm going to do the same for the medium and the large state. So now I have it completely designed so we can get rid of these other states. Now within here, I just have to update the names for the elements. So in this state, the dropdown is open and small is in the hover state. So here, the properties is that the state is open and the hover is none, but that's not true. The hover is on the first element. So here I'll just write first. The second one I'm going to click on and the hover state, I'm going to change it to second. This one, I'm going to click it and set the hover state to third. Now the cool thing about variants is that these are all under one component. So instead of having five separate components for this, it's really all under one element. So if I go over here under assets, over here I have dropdown and so I'm going to click and drag a dropdown on the page. This seems to behave like any other component within Figma. But now the cool thing is that we have this other option within this inspector panel on the side. Now I can easily modify the state and the hover effect for this element. So under state, I can click it and switch it to opened. And now it is in the open state. And under hover, I can switch it to the first element. And now the first element is in the hover state. So this is a really cool way for you to organize all of your components in one place. So now that we have this set up really nicely, let's use it in our project. So I'm going to go back to where that dropdown is placed and I'm going to swap the instance of it with the one that I just created as a component. And now I can see that I have these different states. I can switch it to the open state and I can easily modify these values. So instead I'm going to go back to the closed state. And right now, if I go to the prototype tab and I try to swap it with the other variants, Figma does not give me that option yet in the interaction details. So I'm waiting for them to update this feature so that way you can easily swap between variants. But the way that I've been doing it so far is I'll create a separate frame on the side with each variant. So over here, I'm going to add a frame and then I'm going to copy and paste that within the frame. And so I'm going to have one just for the open state. So here I'm just going to call it drop down open. And then I'm going to add three more states for this. And so for this one, I'm going to say it's the first element in the hover state. This one is the second element in the hover state. And this one is the third element in the hover state. And now because I have these variants all linked up, I'm just going to click on that element and I'm going to modify the state of it to the open state. For this one, I'm going to say that the state is open and the hover is on the first element and so on. So now that we have all the elements lined up, I just have to link it all up. So I'm going to zoom into the project and here under this dropdown, I'm going to click on it. And with the prototype tab selected, I'm going to add an interaction. And on click, I want this overlay to open. So here I'm going to say on click, I want it to open the overlay of the dropdown open. And so now I can add some other properties. So I'm going to select close when clicking outside of this element and I want the animation to be instant. Now within here, I wanted to swap between the different frames and the different overlays depending on if the user is hovering over a particular element. So here for this open, I'm going to click on it. And first for the small rectangle, I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to say that I want this state to be visible when it's in the hover state. So instead of saying on click, I'm going to say while hovering. And while hovering, I'm going to swap the overlay with this one. For this one, I'm going to click and drag it over and I'm going to do the same thing. While hovering, I wanted to swap the overlay and the same for the large element as well. Now, when someone taps on this element, I actually want it to be dismissed. So I'm going to click on this element and I'm going to add an interaction of a click interaction. 
And so when the user taps on it, I'm going to close the overlay. So this is how everything's linked up to this element. So I'm going to go back to my prototype. I'm going to click on this element and now the dropdown is visible. And when I go over each element, it is in the hover state. So this is how I link up elements using variants within Figma. Again, it would be a great feature for them to allow you to swap the elements within this interaction panel on the side. I think that would be a really great addition to this. So that way I don't have to create other frames or overlays on top of this element in order for it to work. But now because these are all components, I know I can easily reuse this throughout my project in different places and also modify the data if I need to. So there you go. That's how I created this dropdown using Figma. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.